everyone. Hope you're having a good day. I'm excited that Fox is going to share, uh, join me today and share her poem. She has two collections of poetry published, and The Raven King is her most recent, and I should have showed you the cover because it's gorgeous, um, and her poem is as well. I hope that everyone has had a nice week so far. What are you reading? Should have brought my book with me. I'm reading All My Rage, uh, and, then I, and I enjoy it, as usual. Fox should be here just now. <laughs> we did it <laughs> yep <laughs> I did a last minute coaching but I got it <laughs> I think I'm the first uh, Instagram live for a lot of people I'm like the, um, the gateway to Instagram live so uh, a distinguished position <laughs> <laughs> yes that's my claim to fame um, how are you this afternoon for you all right. How are you on this fine Pacific Coast morning? Yeah, the sun's coming in. Um, that's pretty good, you know, considering the world uh, and as, as it stands right now. Um, anything else you want to say before you begin? Um, thank you so much for having me. I, oh. I, I think I just referenced I have never done an interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big milestone. I'll have something to write in my diary tonight. Um, but no, really, I am super glad to be here. I I love this series. Um, I'm, I'm always excited when you post another one. So thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here. I was saying you're a published poet. You have two collections of poetry and the chat book. Is that right? I know you have. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have the Hydromantic Histories, which is a full length. Oh, man. And of course, my landline goes. Sorry. Nothing <laughs> That's okay. <about> that. <laughs> That's a given. Um, yeah, there is. Um, my first chat book is out of print. Um, but there's another one, um, that there might still be some copies left at Hyacinth Girl Press. Um, it's called like ash in the air after something has burned. Um, and then Raven King. Yes. Oh, good. You have it. I was saying I should have had it cause it's a gorgeous cover. Oh, isn't it beautiful? The yes, it really is. Like blew my mind. I yeah. Really so congratulations. And you're my, I think you're my first doctor, Fox. I think you're my first, <laughs> my first doctor guest. <laughs> Like, it's been established. Like, you're the gateway. I'm your first doctor. Yeah, I was like, doctor? I didn't know. I, I'm I'm impressed, as I should be. I'm, I'm more literate than I look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, go for it. All right. So, this is my variation on the where I'm from theme. I am from Susquehanna and Shenango Riverbanks from rock salt and backyard timber rattlesnakes. I am from a house with beautiful hearthstones, smooth, gray, smelling faintly of rain. And another house scented with lavender and hibiscus and gunpowder. I'm from ivy and holly, and this berry probably won't kill me if I only take the tiniest bite. And from bitter, but it didn't. I'm from horseback riding, and I'll go where I damn well please. From Kennedy and Poisier, and from the grandmother who was murdered by the IRA in the front doorway of her home. From I saw the spirit leave her body and stories of the puka. And from dizzying incense and which priests we learned to sigh away from. I'm from Bittersweet Farm and forest horses outside a hamlet named for peonies. From Galway Bay and lost in the Atlantic. From ham biscuits and jambalaya, from sodomy and dolme. I come from a little girl caught in a riptide and surrounded by jellyfish, who looked skyward and was pulled ashore by the hand of God. Beautiful. <laughs> M mystical, magical. I just felt this kind of general, um... It, I, it was very evocative and I felt like this kind of, I feel like in, even just in your posts on Instagram, there's this strong connection to connection to like nature and the magic of the world that surrounds us. Uh, and maybe I'm just grabbing that, but that's what I feel. And I felt that in the poem as well, like this sort of, you know, that, that we're welcomed and loved, but you know, we also need to tread with care. 
we can't take things for granted. So I think that like beautifully sums up my worldview. <laughs> Love, we... Yay! <laughs> um, I, yeah, and and I was so impressed with the brevity and how much the ground was covered, which is always a goal of mine in my writing is to like you know cover as much as possible, but not not overstate it. So I was I really um, I felt like the journey of your people, and I thought that was it was really powerful for me. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> this should be a life affirming, creativity affirming experience. So good. Um, what was it like for you? Because I know you played with it a little and did variations, which are more than welcome. I think the prompts are, especially for people who are intimidated by the word poetry, like myself. You know, uh, I was so glad that you were you were so like supportive when I said yeah, <laughs> liberty or two. You were like, that's great. I was like, yeah. whew. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be like no no not on this show no you must <laughs> you must follow the rules <laughs> yeah yeah art you must follow the rules of art <laughs> um so did you start with something more like following the rules or did you just uh, organically right at the beginning say nope not, not happening um I well it's funny you know I'm kind of like a neurotically private person so mm -hmm. I <laughs> um I started off just demarcating like, okay, like these things are private. These things mm -hmm. are like, can be alluded to, but I'm not going to like, you know, perform my identity too much. And then like these things I feel okay stating like a, a little more definitively. So I was thinking about, you know, where, where I come from, who I come from. Um, and I was able to kind of draw out like which threads seems like a good fit for this. Um, and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm from like lots of people and, and you know, a few different places. So um, I think like, you know, I love that you said that you, um, even in my Instagram posts, there's a sense of like connection with the earth because that's something that is like super spiritual for me. It's really important for just like, like general well-being, I think, to be reminded that I'm like part of the earth. Like I'm mm -hmm. a, a natural organic mm -hmm. part of the, the earth and, and therefore of the cosmos and I feel like um I mean I guess that might sound like a little corny but I just <laughs> <laughs> I feel similarly so just join in you know I, I for me I've never really felt I don't think existential loneliness because I never feel alone because I always feel like there's like water or yeah. tree or my dog or you know e even if there are not human beings there are beings um a professor um in grad school at usc who said that um the reason why we have gardens and pets is because they're like the last vestige of the garden of eden and i thought that was so beautiful and like completely true i feel like if you don't remember that you're connected to other living things and including non-human ones um like really easy to forget who you are I mean or at least a part of who you are so I think like I was trying to carry that through not just why it's important for me but I think like you know historically that has been important for lots of people including my family um you know including people in the places that my ancestry draws from so um that was something that I thought was important to bring through um and I was glad to be able to start in the water and end in the water I you know, started on the river banks and ended uh, mm -hmm coming ashore from the ocean so yeah, yeah I love that I, and I mean I'd love you know a lot of uh, thought thought <laughs> believe that water is spirit you know and I, I, I think or use that as a symbol or um, metaphor um, yeah. yeah I mean I think like you know I I realized a few years ago that anytime I've had to deal with any kind of like personal tragedy or loss or grief like it's always like without realizing it, I always gravitate towards large bodies of water whether it's like a river or if I can you know depending on where I'm living um if I can manage it the ocean mm -hmm. I think um and again like I know this sounds like so like woo but it, <laughs> I, but it's true um it has like a really I don't even think it's just like purifying or cleansing, but there's just something really comforting about being 
Agree. Like the ocean is like a, our mother in a way, you know, I don't know. It's, it's really, Agree. yeah. Like it's palpable. I, I agree with For that. sure. I, I just was writing about something yesterday and I was thinking and about memory and I, I can always remember <laughs> people can remember smells or, you know, I can remember the body of water, what it looked like, what it felt like. That's that for me is grounding. Cause I'm always looking for that. I, uh, this is corny, but I feel adrift if I'm not near some kind of water, you know, it's, uh, for me, it is grounding. Um, and you got to figure out what it is for you that helps you get through. Cause you, you need something. I think everyone needs something. Um, and I sort of love the feeling of insignificance that I have when I sit at a huge body of water. I love like, Oh, I'm so tiny. <laughs> I like that feeling. Yeah, I don't even think of it as insignificant, but just that's... you're part of something that's so much vaster. You know, the yeah. rhythm of the ocean moves to are so much vaster than than our physical body. That's true. Insignificant has negative connotations, and I don't have those feelings at all. So, yeah, oh, it is. It's a sense of, like, you're not the center anymore. You're yeah. just something that's so much bigger. And that's, like, I mean, that's a beautiful feeling, you know? that's I think so. Really nourishing and, like for me, it's really soothing too. Um, and that, that probably goes along, right? With like the sense of connection we were talking about with like our, our plants and our, our animals, mm -hmm. um, that there's, you know, it's, it's beautiful to be reminded of all the, the physical, like natural. I mean, we talk about it being spiritual, but they're also physical connections and like, you yeah. know, like natural connections. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah. <laughs> well, if you think about like, um, you when you talked about it being like the mother I mean when you when if you have the experience of having a child they're in water and um and I gave birth to a child in water and um it is uh it's a surprisingly natural I mean I did pick them up very quickly <laughs> I didn't do the whole like let them swim around thing which they seem to do in those videos I was not that zen about it I was like okay give them to them to me now um but uh it it felt very like holistic and and uh true oh, in some way cool. you know yeah I um I love that you got to have a, a water birth I had a c-section because there were all kinds of dangerous problems but I'm sorry that can be challenging it was still beautiful though I mean of course the year the human <laughs> did from nothing <laughs> I mean, thank God for science. Think of how many of us didn't make it through before science. I know. I know. Believe me. As they were administering my the third epidural, I was thinking, <laughs> F you, but also thank you so much. Because <laughs> I was so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, and I think that, and thinking of where we're from, I think we carry that in our, in our DNA, this, like, it did claim a lot of women childbirth yeah. before yeah. science um and i for me when i was pregnant i really did try to walk that line of like this is a natural occurrence my body is built to do this i can do this and then also taking into account yes it's there are risks you know yeah and i mean of course that line is different for everyone because every pregnancy is different but for yeah sure. i think it's great to have the option to have like you know extra help in any way that you might need extra care heaven knows right like we we went many centuries without having extra care <laughs> for sure but, but we died <laughs> yeah. so that was that was the downside um like, <laughs> now like all the extra care yeah no judgment I was uh I always feel like I have to say it like whatever anyone does as a mother with birth with nursing or not nursing or child care or like what no judgment I I think sometimes the media really makes it seem like mothers are sitting around judging each other and I know there is that percentage but for the most part the people I know are very like you do you yeah. you know and I feel like I remember being sort of shocked by that, um, that weird sort of like, um, I don't know, subculture, I guess. I don't know what to mm -hmm. call it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I it was very surprising to me because I just think like so many parts of being a mother or even like being a parent are so hard. I mean, mm -hmm. like things that you have to like teach your children to protect themselves and the things that you have to like explain to them about the world so that they can mm -hmm. make 
like so they can be like a good person in the world you know like mm -hmm. things are hard um mm -hmm. so like when people get really judgmental over like how you feed your child in order to keep them healthy and alive i'm <laughs> like this is like, the easy part though like love your kids feed your kid like mm -hmm. if you can't feed your kid have someone else feed your kid and if you you know you can't be there have someone else there to love and watch your kid like that's really easy <laughs> the, the other stuff is you know where it's hard so yeah 100 percent. i feel like moms should always be supporting other moms like always. yeah i feel like i want to say that like as much as possible because i just feel like are the, I know these moms exist, they're in my world, but they're really small fractions. Yeah. And I feel like, and you can, you can feel from them, it's their own shit. Yeah. You know, like, if you're really paying attention, it's, it's not you, it's them. <laughs> so just, you know, move and, on. Of course, I think some people, when they get really sort of like, uh, like a myopic worldview about something, they get really sort of antagonistic towards other people. I always think, you know, I'm sorry for whatever might have happened to you to make you like mm -hmm. feeling like you have to, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. And then we have to perform a certain type of motherhood. I think it comes from that too. This, yeah. this own, their own concern of being judged or being told they're doing it wrong. And I mean, it's just like, Oh, for heaven's sakes, you know, we're really all doing the best we can uh, really. Yeah. Even the people who are doing a job that is disturbing, most of them are struggling to do the best they can as well. Yeah, and I think it's really nice to have, like, viewpoints outside of my own when it comes to, like, parenting, like, mothering decisions, especially when I had a newborn. <laughs> I mean, I had friends who did, like, full-on co-sleeping. I had friends whose baby slept in, you know, the crib pretty much from day one. It was really helpful to have sort of a, like, a multiplicity of perspectives. Because, um, you know, when you're, like, a brand new mom, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. So. Yeah, and they all turned out okay, right? You know, that's the thing, too. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. You know, I, uh, I like, my phone just did a thing. <laughs> um, I just, I think that's a really powerful thing of having a community around anything, but I think particularly around being a parent that, that it, everyone, it's going to be okay. There's yeah. not one right thing. Um, and that is part of, to close it up with our conversation, that is part of what I love about these poems is there's not one kind of childhood or one way to grow up that's right or wrong or whatever. And also that we can share memories and experiences with people we don't actually share them with just because of how, what we've been through. And I think for me, I love, and it goes back to the nature thing too, I love feeling the interconnectedness of all of us yes and that's what probably i never thought of it until now it's probably one of the reasons that i get so excited every time you have like a new one of these up i'm like oh <laughs> it's a good way to get to know people too you know these people that we know online like you and i yeah. um it's nice to have a conversation and it's hard to just motivate to be like hey should we get on the phone and talk for 20 minutes <laughs> so um any last thoughts? Thoughts? Um, no, just, you know, thanks for having me. And thanks for, like, a really, you know, the world is a certain kind of way right now. Um, thank you for such a, an uplifting conversation and a reminder, mm -hmm. like, sort of an active reminder about, like, you know, the, the things we all carry in our DNA um, and the ways in which we're all connected. That's, that's not something that it hurts to be reminded of <laughs> right now, you know? It's nice. Mm-hmm. Thanks. that's how I feel every week like I believe everyone has a story and so this puts it into practice and for me that's powerful and you're such you know. a facilitator of it I love it I love how you bring thank you I, I it's been it's been it's really such a joy for me it's something I stumbled into I guess that's life for you so um it's really a joy I love it so thanks for joining me it's okay. wonderful to meet you yeah, like um and I'll see you soon on the the social medias <laughs> Bye. Bye.